Oke, okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, welcome to all of the participants for today's event. So uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Aryo Akbar and greeting from uh, Universitas Islam Yogyakarta, uh, Islam Indonesia, Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Um, I'm glad to welcome you again in the third pre-lecture uh, event, which part of learning from uh, Mangun Wijaya, program held by SIM Encounters, Museum Arsitektur Indonesia, and hosted by Universitas Islam Indonesia in Department of Architecture. First of all, welcome to the initiator of this program from SIM Encounters team, Berlin. Hello, this is Sally Bello, Mr. Moritz. Henning and also Mr. Edward Kogel, and also uh, welcome to Mr. Setia Sopandi and Mrs. Uh, Avianti Arman from Museum Arsitektur Indonesia, and also uh, welcome to the family and relatives from Father Mangluijaya and uh, Mr. Uh, Jaka Wasana and also Mr. Agus Tridiatno, and also welcome to the previous pre-lecturer uh, speaker, Mr. Sergius Sutanto, and also Dr. Edward Kogel. Okay, um, here we also have uh, some of the unit masters that already came to the uh, session for today's. There is um, Parisa Musigakama and also Sasikan Sirisopon from Rangsit University, Thailand. And also Dr. Sarizi Muhammad Sukri from University Malaya. And also Fania Dwi Amanda Surya from Universitas of Indonesia. And also Mr. Hari Kurniawan from Universitas Gajah Mada. Mr. Wisnu Agung Hardiansyah from also from Universitas Gajah Mada Indonesia and also Mr. Abdul Robi Mangzaya from UII uh, Mr. Faiz Amdi Suprahman from UII um, Mrs. Johanita Anggiarini from UII also and also uh, Mr. Muhammad Galih Gunagama from uh, UII also and also uh, from Kala Salingam Academy of Research and Education India uh, there is uh, Mr. Chris Abisa, and also welcome to the uh, Professor Johannes Widodo from NUS to the session today. And also uh, welcome to all of our beloved friends and also participants for today's event over here. Uh, and then for today's topic, we will discuss about architecture and creative process of Yusuf Biliar Tamangun Wijaya. Um, which will be presented by Mr. Wiryo Norharjo, MArch PhD. Hello, Mr. Wing. Good afternoon, Pak Aryo. Good to yes. see you again. <laughs> yes, Mr. Usually we call him uh, Mr. Wing. <laughs> Make it I think short. that's easier for you to use that nickname. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wing. Uh, and then... Uh, thank you for joining us. And then let me briefly introduce you uh, in short about Mr. Wing. Uh, Mr. Wing studied architecture in Universitas Gajah Mada, Yogyakarta, and got his uh, Master of Architecture in the West University, Canada, and also um, got his doctorate uh, program in uh, University of Melbourne. And currently, Mr. Wing is active in teaching architecture in UII and also become the vice rector for partnership and entrepreneurship in UII. And Mr. Wing is also concerned a lot about informal uh, settlement uh, in the scale of urban and also architecture. And we can see a lot of uh, his research and also writing about that. And then... Uh, it's also interesting because Mr. Wing uh, have a direct experience to work together with Roma Mangun. Maybe later uh, Mr. Wing will uh, explain about uh, and share about his experience to work together with uh, Father Mangun Wijaya. And then um, before we jump into Mr. Wing presentation, please uh, let us to take the photo of you and also documentation over here. So uh, for today's agenda, we will start with the presentation from Mr. Wiryono Raharjo. And also after that, uh, we will continue the discussion uh, about the creative uh, architecture and creative process of Mangun Wijaya. Okay, now without further ado, I think please, Mr. Wiryono Raharjo, the time and screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pa Aryo. Uh, let me... Uh... 
share my uh, screen. I good afternoon, uh, good morning, and good afternoon because we have uh, uh, colleagues from different parts of the world. Uh, I was informed that it's you know uh, uh, eight o'clock or more in Germany, right? It's now it's uh, almost uh, half past one in 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 Jogja. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Department of Architecture, uh, Universitas Islam Indonesia, for uh, inviting me to share my experience um, of working with the uh, Romo Mangun. So, uh, as directed by the conference uh, organizer, the title, the default title. Uh, is architecture and the creative process of Mangun Vijaya. That, that was not uh, my my own title, but it's already given, right? But then I add uh, a subtitle, an auto-ethnographic perspective, uh, because uh, uh, the uh, most of the contents of this uh, sharing uh, document uh, presentations are based on my uh, personal experience of uh, working with uh, Romo Mangun uh, between uh, 1985 to 1987. I'll, I'll show you the, the proof later on, right? So almost almost 40 years ago, actually. So I was uh, quite struggling to find a document um, that may not be published yet, I mean, uh, in, in the books, right? Because uh, many of uh, Romo Mangun work uh, are not published, right? And uh, some of the works even not built, right? So one of the the work that I'm uh, going to share here is also partly not built, right? But it's uh, I, I, but it's part of the milestone of um, you know of the uh, creative process of uh, Mangun Vijaya, and. Uh, I was quite lucky to join with his uh, design team because at that time I was still a student. I was um, a student of architecture, undergraduate student of architecture at Kajamada University. Um, in this presentation, I'd like to share uh, three stories. The first one is my association with uh, Romo Mangun. Uh, how uh, I got to know him and how I uh, decided then to join um, his uh, design team, right? And then the second one, uh, the lesson learned from uh, several architecture projects. But I will focus on only on the project that I'm familiar. There's a lot of books and, and, and uh, uh, that talk about Mangun Michaya. Not a lot of books, but Mangun Vijaya himself, uh, you know, write a lot of books, right? And there are a lot of discussion yeah. about his, his work already. But now I'm going to focus uh, on the one that I directly engage. Um, and then the, the last one, I would like to uh, discuss a little bit of reflection about the legacy of uh, Romo Mangun. You can see in the, the pictures to the left, this is just show... Uh, how we had um, lunch, uh, a daily lunch. So that's uh, the situation daily because uh, we had uh, lunch break at uh, 12 o'clock. Uh, you know, when we, I was, uh, at the time I was uh, 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 assistant architects uh, responsible for mechanical and electrical um, work of uh, his design, right? And every uh, 12 o'clock, we had a, a lunch break and we eat together. But this one is quite special because this was um, uh, a lunch uh, organized in behalf of the kickoff of the construction process of uh, uh, our studio, right? But it's already demolished. I will show you uh, later on uh, the, the pictures of that studio. Um, so it last uh, two weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Professor uh, Kogel uh, talk about Romo Mangun in Germany, right? So I'm going to continue a little bit uh, of uh, his uh, uh, presentations. Uh, as you may know that Romo Mangun uh, graduated from Germany in 1966 
and then uh, uh, shortly after that, he he went back to uh, Indonesia and, and to Yogyakarta to, and joined uh, the uh, teaching force at Gajah Mada University. But he he was not uh, a permanent staff. In fact, he did that voluntarily, uh, so he didn't get paid, right? So this is part of uh, things that I would like to 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 show you how. Um, I will say the altruistic mindset of uh, Romo Mangun, right? Uh, so he he did it voluntarily for a long time, 1966, and he resigned in 1982, you know, uh, all voluntarily. And he even uh, co-initiated. Those uh, you who graduated from Gajah Mada University uh, may uh, uh, familiar, I'm not sure if still exists or not, but there are two units uh, established by Romo Mangun at that time. The first one is called Design Center, and the second one is called Research Center. I, I worked for Design Center for two years um, as, uh, how do you call it, draftman, you know, uh, helping architects to to uh, draw the design and to produce the design document, etc. right? So it was like, Coincidence that the design center was actually the, um, uh, established by Mangun Vijaya. Um, and I, I got that experience, two years experience prior to uh, my, uh, uh, you know, prior to joining the YPR. YPR stands for Yayasan Pondok Rakyat. I was uh, introduced by my seniors. You can see uh, the pictures to the left. Uh, Darvis Kudori, he was. He's supposed to join this event, but I don't know uh, if 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 he, uh, he said that he is is not able to 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 um, to attend this event because of uh, some other things to do. But I, anyway, I was uh, I was recruited by him uh, to uh, to join the YPR in uh, 1985, and meanwhile, uh, from 1981 to 1986. 86, uh, Romo Mangun was quite active. After the, his resignation, resignation from Kajamada University, he focused his, uh, I, I may call it again, altruistic uh, power, you know, to help the uh, uh, community on the riverbank of uh, uh, Chote. Chote uh, is one of the three rivers that flow across the city of Jogja. So uh, you can see uh, this is the evidence as, uh, of a uh, reference letter um, uh, signed by Romo Mangun uh, when I when I decided when when the project finished, uh, you know, in 1987, and I uh, decided to quit from that uh, uh, studio and join uh, UII. So I, I I you know I moved to UII because after I finished this assignment. Um, so officially, I uh, joined the, uh, uh, I, I look after two projects as uh, assistance architects. Um, the first one is uh, Surabaya University Campus Planning and Design. And the second one is Kedono Trapis Conference. So it's a, a conference located on the slope of Mon Merbabu in Central Java. During those two uh, assignments, because Romo Mangun lived literally in uh, in Chote, he has a cabin. You can see the pictures uh, with McDonald's. Shows the reference letter that um, you know uh, an evidence that I work for him as an assistant architect responsible for uh, looking after the two experts, mechanical and electrical, for the two projects, Surabaya University Campus Planning and Design and Kedono Trapis Conference. And uh, so the uh, uh, during those uh, two assignments, because uh, Romo Mangun lives uh, uh, in, in Kampung Chote, so we often uh, have to go there for a consultation. If not, if I'm not mistaken, I also had got a chance to sleep in uh, his cabin. I, I don't remember, but yeah, uh, we frequent, frequently uh, visited the, the uh, kampung. So 
Um, I'm quite familiar with the, the, the development of the Kampung Jodi, uh, the process, uh, the early process of development. So uh, moving to the lesson learned, uh, the second part of my presentation, lesson learned from uh, the projects, I will focus on uh, three projects I already mentioned to you. But uh, let me first uh, uh, present the quote of uh, the book. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, Professor Kugel uh, also displayed this book, but maybe focus on more on the inner part of the books, uh, right? But I was uh, quite uh, interested uh, to look at the very first page. Um, and if if uh, I read the um, the quote, right? Buku ini ditulis untuk menghormati para tukang dan karyawan karyawati lapangan yang dalam cara-cara mereka tertentu telah menjadi maguru arsitektur yang ulung bagiku. This is a very esoteric language, so I try to uh, uh, translate it. And this is the tra my translated my closest translations, right? So if you look, if you read that. You can see that uh, Romo Mangon is actually uh, he's a, a, a person who loves to experiment, and his uh, his uh, uh, his architectures and his his sketch is always a result of uh, um, integration between what he's seen, what he experiments, right, and and also of course uh, uh, em embrace the many theories, but he always look at the technical, the tectonics uh, part of architectures. He did experiment himself. Um, I remember uh, uh, he uh, he demolished, right, or he renovated um, a part of the or, or studio. Uh, I think you can Google Wisma Kuera. Wisma Kuera was uh, uh, used to be our temporary studio. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to present uh, that uh, case there uh, here. But um, yeah, uh, the 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 process of Ismark Wera was actually uh, he conducted uh, what I call design build. So a sketch and go, I call it sketch and give it to the the the, the construction worker, and then uh, he build uh, the construction worker constructed, and you know months after that he not. He, he he felt that it's not appropriate, and then he uh, changed again, right? So it's not like uh, you know you uh, uh, a process where you finish all the design drawing and then you uh, start to uh, move to the construction process, right? So this is part of uh, I would say a unique but expensive uh, uh, approach uh, of how um, Romo Mangon, uh, uh, you know. Uh, design uh, some of uh, the buildings. Um, right. So uh, now I'm going to uh, start uh, discussing the the lesson learned. Right. Uh, for me, uh, uh, looking at uh, the case of Kampung Chuti, um and then reading the book uh, written by Tarvis Kudori, I think this is probably the most comprehensive book. Uh, ever written about Kampung Chote because uh, this was actually the um, result of a research by Tarvis Kudori and uh, uh, during his um, study in IHS in Rotterdam, right? And then he ended up with more information and published this in 2002. Um, my, my observations uh, my direct observations and also based on the, the story of this book um, suggest that before the existence of Kampung Chote, the settlements was a slum inhabited by informal workers ranging from uh, street vendors, pitch out driver, even prostitute. Uh, at that time, uh, I think uh, in the 70s, no one won, want to pass the that street, you know, the street that that goes toward that went towards uh, the radio station RRI. We call it RRE. You know, uh, it has a. Uh, we don't feel safe in in, in the night, right? Uh, you know, because of uh, dark and there's a lot of uh, cases, right? 
um, at that time, right? So the informal workers faced the threat of evictions from the local authority. So uh, Father Mangon, um, let me move to this, uh, directly to this uh, page. He uh, he did uh, what I call rearrangement of uh, Kampung Chuti. The left, the left uh, pictures shows the settlement before the arrival of Roma Mangon. Right, and uh, it is uh, clearly shows that uh, there are uh, two parts of the settlements. Um, the the north part near the Kondolayu Bridge uh, is the first part, and then the second part, the southern part, uh, is you know divided by uh, a small, I would say, a drainage. Uh, so sometimes uh, the the uh, the area is uh, got flooded because of the heavy rain, right? And that's part of the reason why the governments uh, wanted to um, eradicate these um, um, settlements, right? He, uh, they uh, plan to at that time. There is a plan of uh, uh, changing the landscape of uh, this. Uh, River banks into a green belt, right? But uh, there is a process of negotiation using architectures as, a, I will say, as a tools, right? And the result is uh, you can see from uh, in the in the pictures to the right, right? Um, before that, the uh, the settlements, uh, the 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 residents of the the set this. The settlements, the the slum, uh, often uh, they they're not uh, well organized, right? Uh, even uh, there is uh, often a conflict between the north uh, group and the south group, right? So uh, one of the solution, an architectural solution proposed by Mangun Wijaya was the building number twenty one, which is a multi-purpose hall, a community hall. Um, um that uh host many activities um so they 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 often uh, use that as a, a meeting uh, place so uh, so that's uh, that's part of the solution and i think uh, uh, until today you can see this uh, uh the building is still exist uh, this pictures i took in 2010 and I think today uh, that uh, community hall, the one with the A uh, shape, it still exists. Uh, uh, I think uh, many uh, uh, the residents uh, deliberately um, preserve that. Right. Um, I go back to the slides. Uh, I think if you read the the book, this book, Fastu Chitra, there is also a term that. Uh, becomes, I think, the the basis of uh, architectural theory of Mangon Vijaya, which is uh, the combination of guna and chitra, right? So, but guna is not just a use or functions, and chitra is not just an image. It's 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 well, we we literally translate as use, but the use is not just uh, 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 what you call it spatial arrangements, but also. Uh, uh, a, a use of uh, a certain part of building, like you know, like a, constru uh, uh, a structural part of the building, right? And chitra can also be uh, a lot of things. It's it it can also be decorations. It can also uh, how the 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 structures appear, right? And um, I would say that the development of Kampung Chuti is uh, combinations of the power of guna and chitra to negotiate uh, um, for security of tenure. Uh, number two is uh, the one uh, is the strategy. Or I call it design build strategy. You know, uh, and you can see that in the community hall, the left uh, was the sketch of uh, Rama Mangun, uh, a quick sketch. You know, when, when you design a, a building in the informal settlement, you cannot wait too long, right? 
And this is why, uh, uh, you know, Ramaman on just do the, the the sketch. I call it sketch and go tactics, right? Um, and that uh, that was also done uh, with uh, several projects, including with Mark Wira, right? Um, and and also uh, this, uh, you can see this uh, development of um, community hall from the beginning. The, I think the pictures uh, to the left was taken. I took it from the Aka Khan uh, Award website. It's not. It does not exist anymore. But the left one, I took it myself. So it, it remains exist, right? And uh, this pattern becomes, uh, I would say, a trademark of uh, Mangon Wichaya pattern. He even designed his car. He, 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 he has two cars, and both of them are Toyota Kichang, right? Toyota Kichang. The, the, the first one is the, the proper one uh, with the cream color. And the second one is the, I think it's his uh, official uh, uh, vehicle where he also designed uh, the body himself, right? Uh, using this pattern, right? So back to the to the uh, story of Chote. So, um, I I'd like to 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 look at the uh, the the build form of Chote as. Uh, as a part of the uh, strategy of the settlers to negotiate uh, for security of tenure. And this is, uh, I would say, happened in many cases uh, all over the globe, right? Uh, how architectures uh, start first. This is different from this one, right? The normal one, tenure acquisition in the formal settlements development, when um, you know, all of you are familiar with the uh, uh, certificates of uh, land ownerships and building permit, etc. Even the building has not exist, you already have a secure tenure, and then the architecture start later. So architecture start uh, after you got secure tenure, right? But this one architecture start before you got secure of tenure, right? So um, there is a high specula sp speculations that your building may got uh, demolished, you know, you got eviction, and including the Kampung Chote. At that time, the government plans to um, uh, relocate the settlers um, and join the transmigrations, but then Romangon uh mentions uh that they don't have the capacity to move to you know to outside Java. they have they, they're not farmers right so that's why he uh, he negotiate uh, by involving um students uh you know uh, academics and also the community himself using appropriation of build forms turning uh, the build form into the work of art, you know, so that it stands out the crowd. So this is part of, um, you know, part of the strategy of uh, this one, tenure negotiation, right? Uh, and soon after that, uh, you know, uh, it got uh, infrastructure support like electricity and uh, water connections, right? Uh, especially during the general election. You know, during the general elections, uh, some parties uh, visited that and uh, they need uh, to get uh, more votes, right? Voters, right? So that's part of the strategy also uh, for the informals to negotiate for facilities. And uh, later on, that becomes, uh, you know, the sense of permanent gets stronger and they could... Uh, what I call a de facto uh, tenure, right? So uh, Roma Mangon uh, at that time uh, organized not only students but also community. Uh, so I call it uh, an assemblage of power. Uh, that you know part of the negotiation process to uh, maintain the existence of uh, the informals, and these are uh, part of the. Um, <clears throat> Uh, three groups that involve in um, in the development of Kampung Chote: the residents, 
the formal leaders and the facilitators. All of them are, uh, they, they do it uh, voluntarily, but of course, Mangun Vijaya, uh, I think he, uh, he, he also uh, funds uh, the project using his own um, uh, source of funding. So this is, again, uh, I, I see that as his a strong altruistic mindset. Kampung uh, Chote uh, uh, still exists at the moment, uh, and uh, it's it uh, it it um, how do you call it? Um, experience evolutions. Uh, so it's it's I see it as an adaptive informal settlements. The pictures to the left, I took it in. Um, 2010, after the eruptions of Mount Merapi, you can see uh, the river bank has a different uh, landscape. The right one, I took it in 2018, 18, after the implementation of M3K, right? M3K is also a, a grassroots movement of uh, trying to use, uh, to control the behavior of uh, people that live in uh, uh, the, the settlements along the river banks to reorient uh, the building uh, towards the river. So it stands for, uh, for Mundur Munggah Madep Kali. Mundur is back off. You can see the uh, my illustration. This uh, the before uh, the, the the interventions, you, you don't have any um, path or uh, for mobility, right? But uh, after the interventions, there is a path in front of the house. So the house uh, uh, reoriented towards the river and that uh, creates uh, a behavior of not throwing away the carpets to the river. Because if you treat the river uh, uh, as your backyard, then, um, you know, you tend to, uh, you know, put uh, to throw away the garbage um, uh, to the river, right? So M3K is quite successful in Jogja and also uh, in, um, in in Chote River. You can see the quality of water uh, from the color, right? No one uh, do the, what do you call it? Bathing and toileting in the river anymore uh, today. Right, um, lesson number three. Managing a design teams. Architecture is not only uh, is not only about uh, you know uh, creating a, a drawing or you know a doing a visualizations. It needs a, uh, a a strong a solid team, right? And uh, I know this was uh, actually the the first um, challenging projects uh, received. Uh, by Romo Mangun. So in 1985, he received commission project from the management of Surabaya University. I'm afraid that many of my colleagues in Surabaya don't know this history, right? Last time I met the rector and he even asked me to, uh, you know, to submit some of the pictures because they don't have any record on that, right? Um, so the, the task was to prepare a master plan for Upaya campus. Uh, uh, and uh, at the Tengilis, the area in Surabaya. At that time, uh, Mangun, uh, Romo Mangun was alone, right? Uh, well, he was also, uh, informally, uh, of course, uh, a friend of Darwish Hudori uh, and some youth, right? So he need to handle the project professionally according to the formal standards. So then Romo Mangun established a formal entities called Yayasan Pondok Rakyat or YPR. So YPR is actually an architectural consultant uh, established to uh, run this project. So this is not like, uh, you know, a common uh, uh, practice today where uh, the projects are hand to the architects uh, after, you know, the clients know that you have uh, professional entities. This one is not. Right? This one, uh, uh, the profession, uh, the 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 entities, the organization was built, uh, established uh, uh, after uh, Romo Mangun formally received the commission project. Um, and he, I think it, 
it, it's very speculative on what he did, right? Because at that time, he recruited only the youth. So most members of the design team were students, including myself, and fresh graduates. Darvis Kudori and another a fellow, uh, his name is Katut Vinarto. I don't know if he joined uh, this uh, event today was a, a fresh graduate. I think he uh, they uh, only had a two years experience prior, uh, prior to, uh, you know, uh, run this task, right? So, uh, but Romo Mangon also invited senior experts, as uh, I call it, design chaperone, including many of you may be uh, familiar with um, uh, Ari Mostar Paju uh, at the Encona, right? And some of their fellows, he invited to, uh, he sometimes he, he asked us to go there and to have a conversation uh, with them, right? Because, uh, and also to do a, to a survey um, uh, of the buildings, uh, skyscrapers in Jakarta to, uh, to learn how they uh, design, uh, to learn about the construction, to learn about mechanical and electrical. So this is kind of a learning by doing a process, a capacity building process, very highly speculative, right? But we made it. The 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 right one. You can see the pictures of the runners, the design team uh, that, uh, and that that is uh, our uh, studio, uh, one of our temporary studio because we moved three times. Uh, this is the second uh, uh, move, right? We have to. Uh, the first one was uh, we rent a house and then the contract finished and then we have to move it to this uh, temporary studio um, uh, called Wisma Kuera, right? And this is this was my position uh, during the uh, uh, my assignment uh, uh, designing this building. So the, uh, in the master plan, this building was called the, the main administrative building. And I don't know why the number of uh, floors is 13, right? It's not 12, it's not 14, but 13, right? Um, 13 floors, right? Uh, the chief architects was Romo Mangun, and the key person is actually Hudori and Minarto, because he is the one who translates Romo Mangun sketch, a quick sketch to, uh, to be... Uh, uh, you know, uh, pro uh, to 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 us to keep to, to be delivered to us, and then we produce the the design drawing, right? Uh, then uh, lesson uh, number four, uh, Roman Mangon always, uh, as I remember, he used uh, strongly used precedents, and this was quite challenging because uh, Upaya. Upaya campus is located in Surabaya, right? So he wanted to uh, to use a precedent that represent East Java. So he took Penataran Temple as the main reference to generate the form for the main administrative building. And he's very strict on that, right? Can you imagine uh, uh, designing a multi-story building that I call it, uh, he, he prioritized the role of Chitra of Raguna, you know, the Lord of the, he want to have a, a strong image, but uh, then he ha uh, we have to adjust, you know, the, 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 the space inside so that we, uh, uh, so that the image of uh, Chandi Penataran or uh, Penataran temple, the Hindu temples uh, can strongly appear as the icon of uh, Universitas Surabaya. Um, right, these this are a sample of drawing that I found. It's not, it does not exist anymore. Uh, I was lucky to made a photograph of this uh, drawing in 1990, if I'm not mistaken, before I studied uh, architectures uh, in Canada because they asked for a portfolio, right? So I found this and now I don't know where where they are, right? So I I I I, I wish I could find it uh, in uh, some uh, of my colleagues who used to work with uh, Romo Mangun, right? 
So these are sample of drawing. Uh, and these are also what we call prototyping, right? It is not easy to understand the, the design without making this uh, three-dimensional studies. You know, so we, this is just part of it. We also make many other uh, uh, models, right? Uh, the bigger models to uh, imagine the connection you know, between the 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 envelopes, the complex envelopes, uh, and the inner part of the building, right? So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, some of the buildings were were constructed, but the, this main building were not constructed, and I don't know why, right? I, I up to now, I I've never heard any story uh, behind the, uh, the decision of not. Uh, Real, realizing the uh, this main administrative building, right? Uh, you can see uh, this is uh, some of the building that were constructed. Uh, we were there uh, during the start of the construction of the faculty big buildings. I'm not sure which faculty, if, not, if I'm not mistaken, this is probably faculty of economics. So you can also see uh, the tectonics, um, how do you call it? Approach of Mangon Vichaya. You can uh, see the uh, how we uh, how how complex we draw the building envelopes so that the um, uh, the construction worker could understand, uh, you know, the the composition of uh, of the um, of the wall, right, of the surface. Right, number five is uh, a lesson of dealing with international clients. This is quite interesting because uh, Roma Mangon also um, got the assignment uh, by uh, the conference in Italy called Fitorciano. Uh, and at the time, uh, the site were decided to be located uh, in Kedono on the slope of Mount Merbabu. You, you can actually find a complete story about this in the website. But my my point is not uh, about the story in the website because they don't they don't tell the the the, the challenge of how we uh, design this. Um, the designer Roma Mangon actually don't really. Uh, involved in this. So the key person was actually Tarvis Kudori, right? So uh, I see that as a, a process of capacity building of the junior architects. So when, when Roma Mangon felt that uh, he, the Tarvis, uh, already have uh, enough capacity to handle the project, so he just let it go, right? So in one uh, occasion, Darwis asked me to accompany him to have a consultation with the clients. And I did not expect at the time that the client could not speak English, right? It was very hard, right? It was a nun from Italy, and we had to, um, uh, we had to uh, conduct the uh, conversation uh, with a translation. So there's a translator, right? We show all the design document, right? A plan, a, a drawing of the plan. And I could see from her face that he could not, that she could not understand, right? And he, she was almost rejected. But then we show the three dimensional drawing, the perspective. And immediately she received that. She, she was happy and no, no comments anymore. So I, we were, uh, uh, at that time, we were uh, surprised. Oh, so, and we, we, we uh, then uh, came to the conclusion that, okay, maybe uh, she could not understand the, the architectural, uh, you know, the plan uh, of uh, the drawing plan, right? So, and I, I guess that's uh, quite common. So later, uh, this project occurred. Um, 
Indonesian Institute of Architects Award in 1993. So this is uh, the condition, I think, uh, at the moment, uh, because at that time we, you know, when I was also there, you can see the pictures when we had an inspection to monitor the construction progress. But when the construction finished, the they uh, those uh, nun uh, mentioned to us, this is the last time you can enter this building, so you better made a uh, make a documentations next. Uh, you know, the following day you will not allowed. No one will uh, you know be allowed to. The public will not allowed to get in, right? So yeah, we we made uh, some of the document, but this one is the public area where you can uh, actually enter. The public can actually. Um, uh, what do you call it? Enjoy the the architectures of this convent. You can see um, that this is a, a part of a, a result of a collective learning process between the design and construction team, because uh, at the time the construction team, although the 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 mason was quite experienced, but the leader was not. Uh, it was a, a Romo, you know, a father, a Catholic. Uh, a Romo, where he, he did not have uh, enough experience in uh, constructing a, a non-conventional building. You uh, can see that we use uh, all uh, stones, and these stones was actually part of the community involvement uh, in local material supply, right? So um, all of them are stone coming from the community. Right. Um, coming to the last part, pa Aryo, how many more, more minutes? Hello, Pa Aryo. Hello. How many more minutes? Maybe it's around 10 to 15 minutes. Ten? <laughs> okay, right. Maybe less than that. Um, okay, so uh, this is the legacy. Uh, I, I, I want to go back to the, the first sketch, the Kam Kampung Choti uh, Community Hall. And... Um, you know, this, this becomes, I would say, uh, a main precedence of many uh, buildings designed by not only Terawis Kudori, but also Eko Prawoto, the late Eko Prawoto, because Eko was, although he was not in a part of the design uh, team, but he was, he, he associated with us uh, uh, for a long time during this, uh, uh, you know, this this project as well, right? So um, you you can see this uh, uh, our last studio YPR studio uh, located on the northern ring road of Yogyakarta. If you're familiar with Universitas Pembangunan Nasional UPN, well, it's uh, it was uh, we demolished that because uh, that university planned to build a campus. So uh, you know we we sold the property right, uh, and now it changed to. Um, to the campus, right? So you can see the the form. It's uh, you, you know uh, closely uh, relates to the sketch of Romo Mangun. Even this one. This is uh, the residence of Taris Kudori in Bantul. Um, we we call it Kupu Putih or the White Hut. It was uh, built to host educational activities uh, such as uh, discussions, art performance exhibition etc um so um in a way there is a dimension of altruism here you know uh, that becomes part of the legacy of uh, Roma Mangun um how uh, he in this in this uh, case service um let these uh, facilities to be open for public for uh you know, educational activities for discussions. Uh, last time, I think last uh, two weeks ago, I was not there, but uh, there was uh, performance activities um, as a result of collaboration between Africa and Papua. So there's a dance activities there. Um, and uh, Tarvis, uh, you know, let it use it for for free, right? So that, uh, that kind of uh, attitude, it seems to me, becomes part of uh, the legacy of uh, of Romamangon, the altruisms, the 
<clears throat> the willingness to help others the uh, in any way right not uh, not uh, about the giving money right but giving services right um you may also familiar with this uh, it's uh, called kampung warna warni in malang east java i was uh, told that this kampung was uh, almost got affected right these pictures i the right the right one i took it in 2016 it's already uh, you know uh, rearranged I mean, painted. Uh, I think it was uh, Universitas Muhammadiyah Malang uh, students who work with uh, the CSR of uh, a paint company, and they uh, they did this painting, and uh, they said that uh, in a in a document that I read, it was inspired by Kampung Choti, right, turning the uh, the slum into the work of art. Right, as part of uh, strategies of negotiating the security of tenure, the before intervention you can see this. Uh, it was part uh, uh, partly a subject to uh, threat of evictions. Now uh, both sides already uh, colorful. Uh, I don't include the the whole uh, the, the the whole photographs, uh, because, uh, but you can just easily find uh, in the in the internet that all of the uh, the 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 kampung across this chutipan also follow the path right and it becomes uh, tourist destinations um i guess uh, that's all uh, i can uh, share with you if you uh, have any questions um i would be happy to respond thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Pak Wing, for uh, sharing with us about your experience to work together with uh, Father Mangut and then how you involved in YPR or Yayasan Pondok Rakyat. And then you uh, work uh, in some of the project together with the team and also uh, with the uh, coordination with uh, Father Mangun. And also you, you uh, studied about how... Uh, and explain about the the famous word of uh, wastu citra and then uh, wastu it's it's not only limited to the meaning of use or function and also citra is not only limited uh, to the aesthetic uh, only of the architecture part and then um also uh you talk uh, talk a lot about the assemblage of power from the informal uh designing activity in river today and there are a lot of strategy, just like uh, 3M and so on, uh, to, uh, to to make it uh, or to, to secure the tenure of the of the land in informal settlement like that. Okay, uh, I think uh, before uh, we went to the discussion session, I also would like to uh, uh, welcome Prof. Ilya Pajar Maharika as the Dean of Faculty of Civil Engineering and Planning, Universitas Islam Indonesia. Good afternoon, uh, Prof. Ilya. And also, I, I would like to welcome Professor uh, Dr. Johannes Widodo from NUS also. Uh, oh. Hello, Prof. Johannes. Selamat siang. Selamat siang, Prof. Okay. Um, and then for all of the participants, please uh, feel free to write your discussion on the chat box. And then later, uh, uh, we will try to... Maybe we cannot read all of the questions over here, right, Mr. Wing, because we have a limited time, but... I think we can choose uh, several of the question. Okay, uh, I think before we open to the uh, all of the participants, firstly, we would like to invite uh, Dr. Sasi Kansiris Open from Rangsit University. Have you joined this session, Doctor? Okay, you listen to me. Hello. 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 Okay, uh, can you hear my voice, uh, Dr. Oh. Jessica? Okay, you can hear my voice? Yes. Please, okay. Dr., if you have uh, some insight or you want to share critics or question. Yeah, I, I have a little question. Uh, first, I 
I have a great, I think the great lecture and I have a lot idea about uh, this concept design. I have a little question. Uh, to what extent do people participate uh, in the environment of housing in slum? Yeah. To what extent to uh, do people, people uh, uh, can participate in uh, improvement our housing? Oh, oh. Their housing. Yeah. Okay, so so you, you mean the participation of the housing yes. from the yes. informal settlements? Yes, yes. Okay, maybe Pak Wing, you can uh, oh, directly answer. To... Okay. Yes. Well, uh, if 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 the question is related to um, a common practice, then of course uh, most of the slum dwellers, including in Choti, in the River Choti. There used to be, the, some of them are homeless. Some of them are coming from other cities. They may have uh, uh, own houses in the village, but because they don't have the capacity to make money in the village, mm -hmm. so they go to the city, right? And they become, you know, homeless. They don't have place to stay, right? So the the uh, the slum, the 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 place uh, where uh, they stay at that time oh. was actually um, a very small hut made of, uh, you know, a cardboard, a plastic sheet, etc. Right, and it looks very bad. You know, it, it was a uh, a collection of, I don't know, maybe we call it a tent, a temporary shelter a tent, but it looks ugly, right? So that's why the government has a reason at that time to uh, clear up that, right? So uh, what my, what uh, Romo Mangun or Father Mangun did was uh, to improve the the quality of that uh, set, uh, settlement or shelters so that they can prolong their stay there, right? So this is not, uh, if you, if you look at this as a, a deal, this is not a government project. It's a really, a, I see it as a personal project. The the key words is altruism, you know, a philanthropy. You know, there's a philanthropic mindset or alt, altruism mindset um, and that, you know, he has a power to, it's not easy, right? Because his position as a, as a Catholic priest is often, uh, you know, people see it as suspicious there, right? You won't believe that uh, he is uh, 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 a Romo that, uh, you know, because Indonesia is, made, is Muslim majority, right? and um, he he invited the um, Ustad, Ustad is the um, um, a, a, a Muslim uh, or clerics maybe, right, teachers, he uh, uh, to teach uh, how to read Quran, right? Which is, uh, you know, because he he wants uh, 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 these people to to remain. Uh, he give an option uh, for those uh, settlers to remain there, right? They don't they don't have any anywhere to go, right? So, yeah, that's the only option at that time. I'm not sure today. Maybe so, it's already, you know, uh, almost uh, forty years. So that's probably there are changing of. Um, uh, uh, people who live there, right? I guess that's that's my my uh, reaction. I hope uh, it satisfies uh, you. Okay, maybe from uh, Mrs. Sasikan, any response to that? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Wing, for uh, answering the Mr. Uh, Mrs. Sasikan question. I think the next chance, uh, I will give this chance to Professor Johannes Widodo from NUS. Hello, Professor. Have you still Hi, in this? Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, please. I'm not um, asking questions. Because, I, 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 I'm afraid no, to. Is, uh, <laughs> I have a very close relationship with Romo Mangun and, and uh, it's also in Jogja, right? I'm far away from Jogja. But I think um, the last statement that you make about the, the priest, uh, he's a Catholic priest, but I think it's important also to understand that he's coming from a uh, diocesan priest, mm -hmm. or Pastor Rojo. So it's not right. belong to 
the order. Mm-hmm. So it means that he's a liberal priest. Right. And because he's taught the liberal priest, so I think there are several interesting things that we can discuss now beyond the aesthetics, beyond the tectonics. Because long before we talk about sustainability, carbon neutrality, he already practiced that even during his study in Aachen in Germany. And he published the first book, Pasal Pasal Pengantar Fisika Bangunan. So his approach to architecture is really from environmental perspectives, from the building physics. Then if you look very carefully into that book, it's very clearly that his uh, approach is really about passive design, about circular economy, about carbon neutrality. And that is 1970s, right? Yeah. We just talk about that now. So it's, uh, yeah. I think his, his thought is really well, very advanced, mm. uh, mm-hmm. earlier than the, the time. And he already predicted all this issue of uh, environmental issues, social justice, and so on. So that's why when he deal with the issue like Kalicho Day, he already dealing with the bottom-up approach, mm-hmm. community-based development. Uh, the, the terms that we just you know understand uh, from 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 uh, uh, you know a few years ago, even yeah. place making, right? Yes. Like those color paintings yeah. Yeah. by placing the the wash area at the middle of the kampung. Mm. So it's, he he already knows about and and practicing all of these things. Then of course, if you look into the, the another aspect of of Mangun Wijaya, he's also influencing the archi- different types of architectural education. He's the advocacy of blended learning. He don't believe in the classroom learning. Yeah, yeah. Long time ago, we just talk about blended learning, uh, flip classroom model now. But he already practiced it by rejecting the offer as the head of departments in UGM. Yeah. And then as Tete Musi in 1990s, he's also asked him to be the first uh, dean for architecture. There's a Catholic school in Palembang, and he mm-hmm. refused. So I still have the full text of his rejections, the letter of rejections. And it's not about the rejection itself that is interesting, but his positions. The education should not be producing allies, yeah. people who become oppressors. And that is un- uh, you know, because of his background as liberal priest, as um, uh, people who believe in empowerment, and advocacy. So I think if we can uh, discuss this a bit more, I think it's, it's interesting to write something, either it's an essay or book or even seminar, mm. Mm. To, to, to crystallize all this thought that is very relevant actually for the contemporary time. And maybe we can revisit some of his idea. You're right, yeah. And then we can try to, to implement that in the current situations of climate change, social justice, mm. you know, climate action, and so on. And then probably we can also improve the curriculum mm. uh, of architectural education based on his thought. Yeah. And no one ever write a book about this, no? Mm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> pedagogy and Benamang Wijaya position in terms of, of, um, of architecture and concept. So I think this is the next opportunity that probably we can work together. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, excellent, Prof. Uh, just to react a little bit, uh, maybe you're familiar with Sekolah Mangunan. Yes, SD Mangunan. You know, that's mm-hmm. uh, I guess that's part of his uh, philosophy of, you know, ed- educating people. You know, um, yeah. I was. Uh, he said that he, in 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 one of his critiques, he mentioned about, um, you, uh, you know, criticize the practice of uh, education in Indonesia, like. Uh, uh, pendidikan pawang sirkus, you know, yes. like, mm-hmm. and I was surprised, you know, uh, in uh, 20 years ago, I organized <coughs> an uh, exchange program between Australian uh, elementary school and Jogja elementary school, right? Mm. And then uh, it's an exchange, uh, so the teacher observed how you know how they teach, uh, how the the con- the partners teach, right? So when Australian teachers um, uh, look at the way uh, 
the the teacher here uh, conducts the teaching it, they said uh to me i think they're not teaching they're instructing and it suddenly remind reminds me of mangon wichaya you know you know between the concept of teaching and instructing right so he was uh, uh mangon wichaya used to mention about uh, pendidikan pawang circus uh, in the one of the newspaper i don't remember which one maybe ketolan rakyat or kompas right and that uh, that is uh, in line with what you just mentioned a uh, couple of minutes ago. I think that's uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. And with I you also completely. interested to the who is the lady from Thailand right? uh, just yeah. now, because in Thailand also I I know somebody, but it's not like Mao Mangun, but is uh, known as the condom king of Thailand, uh -huh. Nichai. So right. he has uh, developed a school in Buriram the poorest country, uh, poorest uh, area in, 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 in Thailand. And it's the same principles like Romo Mangun. Through education, he wants to change, to stop the child prostitutions. Mm. He wants to stop all these venereal disease. So that's why he educate people to stop the urban immigrations by giving them opportunity and development in the countryside. So the school in Buriram is somehow is something uh, interesting examples. And I believe also in different ASEAN countries, like in the Philippines, uh, even Malaysia, they have some same similar similar approach. And, and I think what the, the direction of what I, I said now is the future project. Can it just be on Indonesia? Maybe we need to, to do something with our ASEAN neighbors within the, the ASEAN frameworks to bring out all these uh, uh, principles that coming up from the ground with these pioneers. Mm. Mm. It's not just a publications, but probably also a collaboration between several universities to, to, to try this. Excellent. In practice. We he can lead this, right? Well, the first uh, university implemented the, there's a team the, here. the professional the architecture education, department. right? In <laughs> In Indonesia. Okay. Thank you. Okay, maybe Prof. Ilya want to share also or to react uh, this insight by uh, Professor Jonas Widodo. Hello, Prof. Ilya. Oh. Are you? Uh, oh, okay. Actually, he has to leave early. Oh, okay. Not of another meeting. Okay, thank you for the information, uh, Mem Nanda. Okay. Um, Thank you, uh, Prof. Janus, for your insight about how Romo Mangun is quite uh, featureish with his idea about uh, writing a lot of about uh, a passive design and also the pedagogic uh, sessions is also interesting, not only architecture things or tectonic things uh, uh, that done by Romo Mangun, but also the, the other things, just like uh, his social involvement and also concern about the culture. Okay, uh, I think it's the time for uh, reading the question from the chat box. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I will read the, the chat, maybe some of the chat. Okay, Pak Wing, maybe the first question is from uh, Bapak it... Aldrin Febriansyah over here. Okay. So his question is about uh, after Roma Mangun passed away, uh, how the, the development of the Kampung uh, Kali Chodi after that? Uh, how about the sustainability of the Kampung till two days? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Pa Altrin. Um, there is uh, one champion there. I'm not, I'm not sure if uh, he's here. His name is Pak Toto. Toto Pratopo. He's, uh, I, I guess, uh, the. I, I can... I can see him as a guardian of Choti because he, uh, he, uh, you know, he, he tried to maintain uh, the community participations, uh, how, uh, you know, the, uh, a lot of uh, activities that uh, links to the, uh, the protections of the environment. I think including the, uh, the initiative that I just mentioned in my presentations, the MT M3K movement, right? It's genu genuinely uh, come from uh, the uh, people uh, that live in the uh, info uh, in the informal settlement along the riverbank because they have association, right? So 
uh, uh, the uh, the the association, the community, uh, what do you call it? Engagements has been very positive uh, in recent years, um, and you can see it yourself if you have a, a, a chance to observe. Um, of course, uh, what appears in Kampung Choti, it is not like what we've seen uh, in the past. So we cannot. Uh, this is uh, quite challenging because uh, one in one side, uh, some some people uh, try to see that as a, a quote unquote heritage, because it wants the Akakan Award, and they wants to preserve that, right? But this is about place of living with the temporary materials that sometimes you have to, uh, 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 you know, to 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 do interventions to maintain that, right? So a lot of the house has already turned to be a permanent, uh, turned to a permanent constructions instead of using bamboo, right? And it's not easy to, you know, to to uh, change the, uh, you know, to to talk to the people that okay, you 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 need to uh, uh, reserve that, you know, on the basis of what, right? So I guess uh, uh, that kind of a challenge uh, 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 so far as. Uh, exists in 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 Kampung Chote, right? But Kampung Chote is, I see that as a, just a very small part of settlements that exist along the Chote River Bank. If you read the, uh, uh, if you get a chance to read the work of Darius Kudori, the Menuju Kampung Pemerdekaan, the message is not only about architectures, it's about the right to live, the right of uh, housing, right? How people, um, well, the government needs to understand the needs uh, of of uh, decent housing, you know, for the urban dwellers, right? For the uh, uh, the poor people uh, uh, in the city, right? So I guess that's this part of the message. If you uh, look at the flood disaster, for instance, um, it's part of. Uh, 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 actually, strategies of Roma Mangon at that time, he did a research that the flooding is actually not regular. You know, the big flood, the last big flood was um, during the uh, eruption of Merapi. The rest is not, uh, you know, well, there is a flood, right? But it's still manageable. That's why he uh, he 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 did the advocacy uh, using this uh, his uh, approach you know appropriate uh, uh, upgrading of 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 the settlements right because he was sure about uh, that uh, the people can uh, stay there longer right i guess that's uh, my reactions okay thank you uh, the other one is mr andrew is it correct Andrew K. I'm sorry, Pak Wing. Maybe uh, before we go to the question by Mr. Huh? Andrew, I think uh, I will let Bu Fania Dwi Amanda, maybe from University of Universitas Indonesia, to okay. give some stuff or insight. Go ahead. Hello, Bu Fania. Hello. Hello, Bu. Hello. Okay, well, please, uh, maybe you can uh, share your insight. Or... Oh, well, it's interesting a lecture from uh, Mr. Buryono. And I think it's, uh, I can see that uh, the thinking and uh, the strategy from the Romo Mangun is really interesting because uh, he tried to answer the problem appropriate with the context and also how the people in the society live in, the, in there. And also... The environment itself, yeah, not only for the people but also the environment, and uh, and also he used interesting approach which is a uh, participatory. But what the most interesting is like you said before, he invited uh, uh invited youth youth people like students and fresh graduate to join their project, and I don't know how he engage these young people and the society in the environment. I mean, I mean the 
in that place how uh, the Romo Mangun can connect uh, the youth people and then the society there. I think it's really interesting because sometimes the people who live in, in one area will have a different kind of thinking with the youth people, right? So it's really interesting how uh, he can uh, connect it and manage to uh, give a result, a better result for the people there. I All think, right. yeah, I, I think it's my comment. <laughs> okay. okay. Right. You uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's part of, I guess it's part of the, um, his strength, right? He is approachable. He's not like uh, someone who keep the distance to, you know, if you look at the pictures that I share, having lunch together, or our age difference is quite, you know, he was quite senior at that time, right? And yeah, yeah. Uh, in a normal situation, in, in a common situation, sometimes you hesitate to uh, yeah. talk. And he's just talk like us, you know? So yeah. age is just a number. For him, you know, for him, you know, so uh, he's he has a lot of uh, friends from many, uh, you know, many levels, including the government, him, uh, including the governments. So that's why he he has access, you know. Uh, the students, uh, he, you uh, you see that he he used to work for uh, Kajamata University for a long time, right? And of course, he he has a lot of. Uh, fans, if I may say, that a loyal fans like including Taris Kudori and Eko Prawarto, for instance, Eko was very close uh, to him, right? He has a, a, many projects also uh, with Eko, right? As a different, how do you call it, different uh, uh, entities, right? But yeah, Eko also helped that. And so those people has actually helped him to uh, organize. Uh, the, uh, and facilitates the uh, activity. Also, people non-architectural students, anthropology uh, anthropology students who actually willing to live there uh, and uh, becomes what do you call it facilitator. Um, some of uh, some of the school even use that as uh, what do you call it PKL. Uh, you know that pra uh, praktek lapangan. If you know, if yeah, I may yeah. say, yes, I right? Know. Yeah. So yeah. KKN now. <laughs> KKN, yeah, uh, yeah, but at that time it's not KKN. It's a uh, it's live in. Oh, you know, live in. Live in and okay. and help the the people. people to you know to do to do things like uh, I don't know many many uh, skills skills upgrading, you know. I, right. I think it's I think it's really important to understand that and to learn that skill. To yes. get the better result for designing, like for people. Yeah. Thank you um, so much. Yeah. Also, uh, architecture is not just you know physical entities for him. So it's about an assemblage of people, you know, uh, of a uh, groups of people, and it needs to be organized. So I guess that's, I guess that's part of the lesson learned that uh, many mm. architecture students need to to learn yes. managing people. Yeah, it's not just a design, but to connect with other people. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. So, right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay, Bufania. thank you, Bu Fania. Yeah. Okay, maybe uh, we continue with the question, Pawi. Okay. Yeah, maybe the, the question from uh, Mr. Andrew. So, uh, what is particularly special about Roman Mangun's contribution in Indonesian architecture canon? What would be your answer? In short, Mr. Wing. <laughs> this is yeah, it's quite difficult because it's difficult questions because uh, actually, Ramon, when you say for me, it's about uh, advocating the poor, how architecture can advocate the poor, you know, how architecture can help upscaling the condition of people, how can it protect. Uh, for instance, in the case of informal settlements, force evictions, for instance. So, you know, those uh, are the main, you know, because altruism is part of the keywords. But if you say uh, architectural canon, then uh, he's, he's very, uh, if you look at the design of uh, um, uh, Universitas Surabaya that I just shared, he's a, it's, he strongly also used, I, I didn't mention, but 
when I uh, inspect his book, you know, when he, he made Vastutrita, he actually, maybe it's a practice that is not acceptable today because he cut the pictures from the Western book, you know, the photograph of uh, Le Corbusier uh, work, etc., and then glue it, uh, lay out it, you know. Nowadays, you use computer, but at that time, he used, he used uh, that, that strategy because uh, he wants to, to uh, the book was very rare at that time, right? So he was uh, very much uh, uh, inspired by Corbusier, Pilotis, for instance, the mm -hmm. uh, uh, apps, up, uh, using uh, foundations and then making a free uh, space underneath the the mesh, you know, that's what the uh, uh, administrative building of Surabaya looks like if it was constructed. You know, unfortunately, it was not constructed. Right? So that's, I guess that's my random, <laughs> I'm sorry, random uh, reactions because uh, it's, um, uh, but anyway, Kuna and Citra is probably the, the canon, if I may say, um, of uh, or prescriptions of Ramamangon architectural theory is how those two things combine and use uh, as a power to realize your um, uh, ideas, right? Sometimes Kuna has uh, Kuna has um, um, play more than Chitra. See, I'm wearing this. I have to. Uh, I have to, what do you call it? Uh, I have to deal with the heat, right? But sometimes appearance is, you know, more priority. I prioritize the 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 the, the appearance by uh, keeping, you know. I I have to. Uh, okay, if I want to 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 have a, a comfort. I can do it later on when the session finish. So I guess that's part of the the negotiation between Kuna and Chitra, and that's what uh, I learned from 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 Roma Mangon. Uh, two weeks ago, sorry, mm -hmm. last week in fact, I met uh, the son of Arif Budiman. Arif Budiman, Professor Arif Budiman Saladigo. Yes, uh, his son works uh, closely with us, uh, uh, UII. And he mentioned uh, that his mother lived there regardless, you know, regardless the challenge. But he wants to to preserve the design. Yes. So the, the the we have to the body has to adjust with that, right? And that's uh, I experienced that with uh, 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 with the design of Universitas Surabaya. You know, uh, I I mentioned in my presentation that it seems to me that he. He prioritized the chitra, the image, offer, offer the function, the use, right? I guess that's 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 it, what it is, right? Thank you. But I'm sorry, Pak Wing, if I can ask a question, maybe uh -huh. from Wastu <laughs> and Chitra. I think uh -huh. uh, what is the most dominant one uh, or the pro priority uh, of the most project that done by Roma Mangun? Is it uh, about the guna or chitra? No, so it, it it depends on the case. Depends on the yeah, it really depends on the case. Oh. You cannot, uh, and I was sort of very surprised. Uh, like since the beginning, it seems to me that he built trust to the client. Mm -hmm. You know, because we got paid. I mean, yes. there's no rejection at all. I mean, like, all right. you know, he uh, even established the design team, uh, uh, legalized that. Right, it's very it's uncommon, you know. When mm. uh, when you uh, uh, assign a client, commonly you you look at the what do you call it at at, at the 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 the, the design profile, firm, uh, right? the, yes. uh, the legal entities before you decided to choose that. It's a it's a lot. Uh, it's a, uh, you know it's a very expensive project, right? Yes. So I guess building the trust is important. Maybe that happens also to. A big architects like Zaha did etc. Yes. You mm -hmm. know she can uh, freely experiments with the form like that, and because of you know building the trust, right? So I guess that's uh, my my reactions. Okay, thank you, Pak Wing, for uh, uh, the explanation.
uh, I think it's quite complex to uh, define about uh, Romo Mangun in short because there are a lot of things that uh, become his strength, uh, especially in the process of design. Okay, Pak Wing, I think we can continue to uh, the next question. This is from Pak Galih Gunagama. Oh, so, this uh, is he talked about friend. <laughs> yes. He talked about the process of design. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, how far was his or Romo Mangun Wijaya involvement in the construction phase? I think, Maybe I from, think it's very close. Right? Yeah, uh, I think it's very close. I, I, it reminds me of my other friends. Uh, his name is Lauri Baker. I think oh, I, wrote that, Baker. I wrote that uh, article in Compass long time ago. He is like that, right? <clears throat> He's a... Mm. Uh, He's very close to the he's very close to the mason to the carpenters and he direct uh his thought you know I'm, I mentioned about sketch and go sometimes he he made sketch and give it to the tukang you know the masons the construction people to uh to realize that and then uh, uh if he didn't like it then it just uh change that I mean it's not sometimes it's not cheap right? Because uh, it's trial and error, right? But that's what what uh, is a process of understanding the connection between uh, design and construction, which is uh, nowadays is often uh, distance, right? Construction people and uh, design people is often distance, distance, right? Uh, so that's what uh, you know. Uh, what is uh, what lesson learned that we also experience? Uh, for instance, in Kedono, we he told us to be there right to closely monitor because um uh what uh the the person who run the construction is not uh, has has no enough experience so in a way this is also part of the educating uh, how architects educate the construction people and learn from each other and i guess that's part of his strategy in uh, many of his projects yeah. Yeah. Also, so it's not uh, he he rarely use industrialized uh components right yes you look at the 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 windows of uh, Katono Travis Convent it was very difficult for us to create the mold for that right but that's uh, you know that's how how, you, how he is he, he probably this is part of creativity dimension if you you know you put it in the title of this presentation the creative process I guess this is part of uh, the creative process. To be creative, you you need to 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 uh, face challenge, and that's uh, that's I, I guess that's his strength, you know. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Pak Wing. So Ramangun is always involved to the construction oh. process, right, Pak Wing? Just close to the, the yeah. At, 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 uh, if not, he will assign oh. students or his uh, assistants to be there. Okay. Right. Thank you, Pak Wing, for the answer for the question. And then I think yes. uh, we still have time for one or one question over here, Pak Wing. There is a uni question. So, um, I think it's quite uh, same. I think this is not uh, questions, but it's a uh, comment, is it? Uh, from Aska, maybe. Oh, from Aska. Okay, yes, Aska Al Atar, Pawin. What were the primary challenges? The primary challenges faced during the Kalicho River redevelopment project. Well, um, the the primary challenge was the force evictions was uh, to fight the government plan. You know the story behind. Not only, you know, there is a very complex story behind it. One of them is he planned to do hunger strike, you know, and he almost did that, right? So uh, that is part part uh, of his uh, frustration, you know, that uh, at the time the local government even tried to, you know, to push, you, you already did, uh, or advocate uh, the the construction process uh, uh, of slum improvement, but still the threat of eviction it's still there, right? 
But then, uh, of course, uh, I mentioned about the assemblage of power of the community, and he 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 used that right uh, for negotiating uh, to the government, and he made it. And later on, uh, the students uh, actually uh, got the idea of uh, submitting the case to the Akar Khan, right? That's also part of the negotiation, right? You know, it's not easy at the time because you have to uh, do a record uh, and then uh, to, uh, to, to redraw, right? Uh, the process was not recorded. And if you want to submit to uh, a competition like that, you need to have a record. So this is like a redrawing, uh, uh, you know, making the document uh, uh, out of the existing building, right? Quite challenging at times. And this is also part of the negotiation process of um, uh, to gain the security of tenure of uh, the informal settlements, right? So I guess that's uh, my reactions uh, of the challenge, the primary challenge. So, Others uh, probably very technical, right? Uh, including uh, the recent uh, effort to distance the building to the river using uh, the M3, M3K approach, right? So if you go there, it probably some of the building are not original anymore, but uh, they maintain the existence of the gathering hall, the multi-purpose hall, uh, to com commemorate the the originality of Romomangun um, um, architecture. Okay. Thank right. you. So you say that exposure is become one of the strategy also for securing the tenure, right, Pauline? Yeah, 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 yeah. To, to get a lot of attention, maybe from get the a lot of attention to get uh, to make it uh, look beautiful uh, yeah, yes. using. Uh, I think he used to mention about uh, about putting a makeup. You know, if yeah. a girl put a makeup, it will look different. It people will appreciate more. Uh -huh. So that's the strategy, right? It's also influencing today's Jodipan vintage, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's according to the document that I, you know, the, to the, to the the writing uh, and the the newspaper that I, uh, I studied, right? Okay, thank you, Pak Wing. I think uh, the time is up over here, uh, and then uh, before we close the session, I will. Uh, uh, try summarizing our discussion for today's following. And then uh, in this session, uh, Mr. Wiryono Harjo already shared about his experience to work together with uh, Father Mangun Wijaya in YPR or Yayasan Pondok Rakyat and also uh, in, involved also in some of the project that done by Romo Mangun and team. And then also uh, Pak Wing also talked about his uh, strength about how he tried to help the, uh, and also solving the problem in the informal settlement and also how he got its famous uh, canon was to and Citra about how the building should use or function and also how the building should uh, have its aesthetic quality. Uh, I think, uh, and then today's, I think uh, the influence that done by uh, Romo Mangun is very strong. We can see that a lot of uh, architect or maybe young student of architecture still get inspired. And then uh, the, the concrete examples is one of uh, the village in Jodipan Malang is also try to uh, uh, apply the concept of uh, beautification from Romangun to get the attention. Uh, I think uh, it's the end of our session for today's pre-lecture event. Uh, and then once more, thank you. Pak Wiryono Harjo or Pak Wing already share your experience about architecture and creative process of Mount Wijaya. And also thank you for all of the uh, family and relatives from uh, Pak uh, Father Mount Wijaya and also all of the unit masters and all of the our beloved uh, participant and student of uh, from several campus that already attend this uh, session today. Okay, I think... Uh, this is the end. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.